All day, all night, war ruins lives and ends them in Syria. From here in the center of Damascus, the regime's stronghold, we can see its guns hitting the rebel-held suburbs. On almost every day, except the 21st of August, when hundreds died in a chemical attack, the war is fought with conventional weapons. Ending all the individual daily tragedies caused by bullets and high explosive is the big challenge for international diplomacy, bigger than dealing with chemical weapons. This was the Day of the Cross, an important Christian festival in the Greek Catholic Cathedral in Damascus. Almost all the worshippers fled here from the fighting in Malula, a Christian town about 40 miles away. Antoinette Talab was wounded in the rebel attack on Malula. Her family and neighbors were mourning her brother, cousin, and his nephew, who were shot, she says, by rebels when they tried to surrender. Pictures from the first attack show Antoinette being carried to safety. She says the men who killed her relations had local accents. Antoinette says they used to live happily with their Muslim neighbors. Do you think you could live like that again? Could you trust them again after this? No way, she said. Never. It's impossible. This didn't start as a sectarian war, but it's becoming one. Jesus help us, she says. So all this is another sign that what one observer here called the Syrian mosaic of different sects is breaking up. These people don't trust a lot of their old neighbors anymore, and they've no idea when they're going to get home. What do you eat for breakfast? I eat some meat and rice. The school term has started for everyone who had a school to go to. UNICEF says two million Syrian children aren't getting educated. Even at this school in a well-off part of Damascus, a third to a half of the girls have lost their homes because of the war. We used to be able to travel into the rebel-held suburbs that get pounded by the regime's guns. That's no longer possible. But the pain and loss suffered by civilians cross the lines of a war that Syrians and foreigners can fuel but can't stop. Jeremy Bowen, BBC News, Damascus.